بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله I'm Ashraf Khatir professor of surgery at Mansoura University Egypt and the third episode of the breast speaking about the supply of the breast number one the arterial supply of the breast the breast is supplied by three sources what we call medial perforators and these medial perforators come comes from the internal mammary which is a branch of the subclavian artery Uh, through the second, third, and fourth intercostal spaces. So they are called medial perforators. What are the lateral perforators as we see in this photo? These are the medial perforators and lateral perforators comes from the lateral thoracic branch of the axillary artery. Axillary artery, the lateral perforators from the lateral thoracic artery. And in the lower part of the breast, Some perforators, they are called lower perforators from the posterior intercostal arteries from the aorta itself, from the aorta itself. What about the venous supply of the breast? The venous supply is going with the arterial supply. So the veins, uh, some are medial uh, uh, veins and lateral veins and posterior intercostal veins also. The posterior intercostal veins have a surgical importance. The posterior intercostal veins drains into the prevertebral plexus, what we call Batson's plexus. Batson's plexus, the veins of this plexus are valveless. So malignancy from the breast can cross to this plexus and goes into the systemic circulation accounting for brain metastasis, bony metastasis, or blood metastasis, by escaping through this plexus, what we call Batson's plexus or prevertebral plexus of veins that drains into the azygous vein later on. This uh, about the uh, venous supply. What about the nerve supply of the breast? The breast is supplied by anterior and lateral cutaneous branches of T2 into T6. A very important nerve is called the intercostal brachial nerve. Intercostal means coming from the intercostal spaces. Brachial means supplying the arm, especially the medial part of the arm. This nerve comes out through, through the second space, through the second space, and traverse the axilla, traverse the axilla to supply the inner, upper inner part of the arm. What's the surgical importance of the intercostal brachial nerve? The intercostal brachial nerve is surrounded by the central group of the axillary lymph nodes and during mastectomy and axillary dissection we can sacrifice this nerve that results in burning sensation, numbness and tingling of the medial part of the arm. And if the lymph nodes are free we can preserve the intercostal brachial nerve. A very important two nerves are related to mastectomy. You must preserve both Number one, the long thoracic nerve of Bell. Long thoracic nerve of Bell. Long thoracic nerve of Bell is supplying, is called nerve 2 serratus anterior. It comes from 5, 6, and 7 roots of the brachial plexus. The long thoracic of nerve of Bell runs all over the medial chest wall. And you must identify during axillary dissection and preserve this nerve because injury of this nerve results in winging of this camera. The second very important nerve is what we call the thoracodorsal nerve or nerve 2 latissimus dorsi muscle that uh, arises from the posterior cord of the brachial plexus and supplies the latissimus dorsi muscle and if this nerve is cut it runs with the thoracodorsal vessels artery and vein and if, nerve, if this nerve is cut, weakness of the latissimus dorsi results in weakness of arm extension, especially in swimmers. Especially in swimmers, weakness of the arm extension will occur. So both nerves must be preserved during axillary dissection and mastectomy, long thoracic nerve of Bell and thoracodorsal nerve of two latissimus dorsi. These are the important nerves to be discussed with the breast. And then shifting to a very important issue, what about the lymphatic drainage of the breast? Simply, as we see, uh, there is what we call subarular plexus of savvy that drains the skin of the breast to drain into a deeper plexus, as we see in the diagram. And the deeper plexus drains into the submammary space, submammary space to drain into either the axilla, 
laterally or the internal memory medially and so on so actually 75 percent 75 of the breast is drained into the axillary lymph nodes but the remaining parts are draining into either the internal memory nearly 20 percent draining into the internal memory especially the medial quadrant as we see in this photo draining the medial quadrant into the internal memory but the lower quadrant may drain into the anterior rectus sheath lymphatics and this accounts for peritoneal carcinomatosis through the lymphatics of the rectus sheath the tumor may escape to the abdomen to produce ascites and peritoneal carcinomatosis and what we call sister joseph nodule which is a malignant nodule of ampelitis and of course, with peritoneal carcinomatosis, the liver may be affected but by capsular metastasis, not parenchymal metastasis, because parenchymal metastasis is through the blood, not uh, due to peritoneal carcinomatosis. Also, some uh, of the malignant cells can escape to the posterior intercostal lymphatics also to escape with the venous lymphatics to the Batson's plexus also. This accounts for systemic spread of the breast cancer. So, these are the distribution of the uh, lymphatics. What about the anatomy and levels of the axillary uh, lymph nodes? And th th this is a very important question. As we see in this photo, it is an illustrative one. The levels of the axillary lymph nodes. Number one, the basal group. The basal group, as we see in this photo, is composed of what we call pectoral lymph node. Pectoral lymph node, which is present over the anterior uh, axillary fold, which is a pectoral muscle. This is called anteromedial group or pectoral group. Then what we call the scapular group, it is related to the thoracodorsal vessels or subscapularis muscle. If you insinuate your hand deeply into the base of the axilla, you can feel these lymph nodes. And lastly, the humeral group or lateral group. So anteromedial, posterior, and lateral. Anteromedial, posterior, and lateral. This is the basal group. Then the basal group drains into the central group, and the central group is located nearly behind the pectoralis minor muscle, pectoralis minor muscle, as we see in the diagram. The central group, which is the largest group, the main group of the axilla, the most bulky group, the largest group, is the central group, which is located nearly under the pectoralis major muscle. And the central group drains into the apical group. And as we see, the apical group is below the level of the axillary vein. And the end of this group, a ligament called costoclavicular ligament, which is present between the clavicle and the first rib. This is the end of the apical group. And then the infraclavicular lymph node, then the supraclavicular lymph nodes. And they are dividing the levels into level one, two, and three. Level one, below the level of the pectoralis minor. Level two, behind the pectoralis minor. And level three, above the level of the pectoralis minor. And by this, we come to the end of this episode. Thank you. And see you in the next episode, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you.